All right, welcome back, mercenaries. I'm pretty sure all of the mech warriors are okay now, I think. Yes, uh, they have gotten over. Big Mac has gotten over the coronavirus. He is okay now. So what we're going to be doing today is... This right here, a priority war council. So this is as far as I've gotten in the game. I guess we're going to go back to Weldry for a war council with Lady Centrella, who we haven't talked to in a while. With the Torians entering the war, our tactics are going to have to change. Lady Centrella is waiting for us at Weldry, so... Off we go to Weldry. If you recall, Weldry is the 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 first story mission we did for Lady Kamea. It's the one where we had to... It's the one where uh, the trebuchet got smacked up by the Jaeger mech. It's the one where we had to liberate the prison camp. So, I guess we're going back. Now, one thing we can assume... Because the last mission gave us a Highlander, an assault mech, the game now knows we own an assault mech, so I think it's safe to assume that they will be preparing enemies worthy of an assault mech for these story missions. This was a three skull mission, and we're doing three and a half. Four. I was, I, I did a, I think I did a four, yeah, I did a four skull mission while I was gr grinding off screen, so. Despite this, we should still have an advantage. Even though we don't have the biggest and baddest of all of the battle mechs, the Atlas and the King Crab. That said, you know, we, we need more than just the Atlas and the King Crab, because both of them are extremely slow. We're going to be using some of the other assault mechs as well. And I may go back to acquire some light and medium mechs if we wind up with missions that demand even more speed. Well, uh, let's go ahead and, uh, well, let's let's go shopping first. Let's see, what are you selling? A uh, DLC mech. Looks like nothing too intro. Oh, cockpit mod, I'll buy that. New equipment available. Uh-huh. A machine gun that's a little better, I... Why New not? I like to pick available. up the weapons that are slight improvements. Got a heat bank. Oh, I got a heat exchanger as well. This is the basic heat exchanger. Oh, we have a better quality heat exchanger here. Yeah, I think I'll pick them up. We've got the money to burn. I'll buy available. the heat bank too. I'll buy all of them. I like to collect the accessories because you can do some interesting things with them. Anyways, let's go ahead and launch the contract and see what happens. And I promise you that our forces are maintaining a firm upper hand against this false restoration. Thanks in part to the support of our newfound allies in the Torian Concordat. Just today, those allies, led by the heroic Commodore Samuel Austin, liberated my own daughter, Victoria, from insurgent captivity. And though the fight was hard, our new friends won the day through the strength of their courage and the virtue of their purpose. Soon, we will end this war. And when we do, we will turn our attention back to the expansion of our industry and the betterment of our people. Long live the Torian Concordat, and long live the Oregon Directorate! Interesting. Yeah, I haven't seen that cutscene before, so... Lady Kamea Arano says, Anna Maria, I summoned you here to discuss long-term strategy, but we have a crisis to address. You've seen my uncle's broadcast, what Ostergaard did to Lord Corrosus. Yep, he's dead now. What his soldiers are still doing to the people of Smithen. I am honor-bound to ride to their defense. Kamea, you've got much bigger things to worry about than Smithen. I won't mince mi I won't mince words. Your very cause your cause is very nearly lost. With only a small fraction of their fleet, the Tarians have you dramatically outgunned. Given the chance, 
the Iberia alone could break your army in two. I believe the Iberia is uh, Commodore Ostagard's like mega battleship, like dropship thing. Uh, if you're wondering why he was able to just waltz in there and just smash them, remember what I said in the last episode that the the Tarians are a major superpower. They're, they're you know, like uh, it's like your little backwoods wouldn't be able to withstand uh, a massive first world country, basically. Why, uh, let's see, uh, why are the Tarians fighting for the Directorate? Do you have any concrete answers? If you're looking for proof, I can't help you. But I can tell you what I think is behind all of this. The Perdition Massacre. That was that thing about the chemical weapons. Let's get a context clue. A chemical attack on the Tarian border system of perdition that claimed 11,000 civilian lives. Protector Thomas Calderon was quick to blame his neighbors and rivals, the Federated Sons, for the attack. The Perdition Massacre is the latest in a long string of diplomatic incidents that have raised tension between the Federated Sons and the Tarian Concordat to a boiling point. I believe House Davion's attack on the Concordat created an opportunity for Espinosa, and unfortunately for us, I believe he has taken it, so I'm guessing Espinosa must have offered some kind of deal. I wonder what he offered them, though. Uh, what opportunity? Spell it out for me. We're being rather demanding to a head of state. Uh, Lady Anna Maria Centrella, she is the leader of a major power. I'm surprised that we're able to be so direct with her. Protector Calderon believes that a Davian invasion of the Tarian Concordat is imminent. In the Directorate, he sees a convenient pawn and a buffer to protect a poorly defended stretch of the Concordat's border. Ah, I see what he's doing. He's going to use... He basically wants to use the... Uh, uh, the Oregon Directorate as a proxy. Basically, uh, a nation... That is an ally of his where if somebody wanted to if if the federated sons wanted to invade on that side of his space they would t they would have to go through the directorate and that would mean like it, it, in a sense it secures his border like countries have done this throughout our history like uh the soviet union i believe they did it with like uh turkey for example and other middle eastern countries they use them as like a buffer to protect uh you know different portions of the world that that you would be dragged into, like, a, a proxy battle with. In fact, I think uh, Vietnam was one such proxy battle. Not that it, I don't think that it geographically protected the USSR or anything, but that was an example of the United States having to contend with a, uh, a proxy nation-state, much in the same way that, what do you call it, the Torians are trying to use the Oregon Directorate. Anyways... If the Directorate's weapons have been coming from the Tarians, I imagine they've had an agreement in place for some time. Yeah, the timing makes sense. By arming the Directorate, Calderon would be fortifying his own border against invasion. When Espinosa learned about Castle Nautilus, he must have used it as a bargaining chip to get the Tarians into the war on his side. In a limited intervention, but yes, Calderon would have leapt at the chance to claim an SLDF armory with a major war imminent. The, ca the capture of a fully stocked outpost castle could have provided the Torians a tremendous advantage, but you destroyed the armory and killed their soldiers and apparently destroyed one of their dropships on Anvelt, which was uh, Commodore Ostegard's son. I suspect that your problem with the Torian Concordat have only just begun. If Commodore Ostergaard wants to hurt us, he has to find us. The Reach is a big place. Of course it is. That's why Tarian battle mechs are sacking Smithen even as we speak. That's uh, Lord Corosus's planet. He's trying to lure Lady Arano to him. It's a deliberate provocation, Kamea. You must realize that, I see. So they are trying to get us to come to him. We fought against the Tarians on our true. We know what we're up against, so let's talk about how we're going to win this. Get me some Mountain Dew real quick. Yeah. Not through direct confrontation. If you let Ostergaard bait you into attacking him on Smithen, you will die, as will Lady Arano. 
This isn't hyperbole, Kamea. You will die if you take the field against him, and your restoration will perish with you. What would you counsel me do then? Nothing? Would you have me sit on my hands while a Tarian butcher murders the people I've sworn to protect? I would advise you lead your army wisely and to stay out of battles you cannot win. Kamea, listen to me. There is still hope, but you won't find it on the battlefield. You know what's funny is, uh, as much as we're talking about the Tarians using the Directorate as a proxy, that's what Anna Maria Centrella is using with, uh, what's her name, Kamea. She's using her as a proxy to battle against the Directorate. Not that... It's not necessarily wrong to be the tool of someone else if you're still getting what you want, I believe, is the situation we're in. The alliance between the Tarians and the Directorate is tenuous, far more so than they would have you believe. Protector Caldera knows what kind of man your uncle is. We could turn allies into enemies if, we've tur if we play our cards work. right. That, if that's true, why would he join forces with Espinosa in the first place? Good question. His nation is teetering on the brink of war with the Federated Sons, Commander Fox, and for all the Concordat's bravado, it would certainly lose such a conflict. That's true, Sensei. Uh, as much as I was referring to the Concordat as a first world nation, they're definitely not compared to the Federated Sons. The three, the, the five great houses are the first world nations in this case. Given the circumstances, it is, it is really so surprising that he'd accept an offer of friendship if open warfare does erupt, he's going to need all the help he can get. As I said, I am sure that we could turn this situation to our advantage. Even as we speak, my agents are digging for information that will open a rift between our enemies, and I am confident that they will find it. And, but Kamea, none of this means anything if you let Ostagard goad you into a suicidal charge. So I beg you, ignore him. Stay away. She can't do that, Lady Centrella. If you'd been here before we liberated the system, if you'd seen the things we've seen, you'd know better than to ask. I appreciate your advice, Anna Maria, but if were I to follow it, the Oregon people would lose faith in me, and they'd be right to do so. I owe it to them to be better than that, and so I will fight, but not in the way that our enemies expect. Interesting. I was wondering if she's going to pull a Luke Skywalker, like, ending her training and challenging Darth Vader a little too early. Tell me what you mean. Ostagard expect me to deploy my army against his forces on Smith and to lead from the front as I have in our battles against the Directorate. You've convinced me that this is a risk I can't take. And so, if he expects me to come at me with him a hammer, with a hammer, I will use a scalpel. I will use a scalpel. It's, I don't know why I can't read today again. Probably because I'm super tired. I trust that your company is up to the task, Fox. Uh, what am I going to say? Um... Um, I don't like any of these options, so let's just go with the mercenary option. If the price is right, sure, I'll be your scalpel. There you have it, Anna Maria. That's my answer. I won't take the field myself, and I won't redirect my army, but I'll be damned if I let Ostagard's troops slaughter my people without a fight. Your mercenaries have been one of your key advantages in this war, Kamea. By doing this, you're putting them at grave risk, but if your heart is set on returning to Smithen, I'm powerless to stop you. Instead, I'll wish you good luck and take my leave. I'll be in touch when my agents know more, but please, Kamea, stay safe. I don't know if I can stabilize the Reach without you. I won't let Ostagard kill me, Anna Maria. I promise. Lady Arano's contract to repel the Tarian assault on Smithen is ready for review. Interesting. Will this be a defensive mission? I don't like defensive missions. I'll be the first to tell you. Defensive Smithen. Proceed to Smithen and protect its people from the Tarians. Early reports suggest a tight battlefield. Because of this, we recommend a lance loadout that strikes a balance of mobility, durability, and firepower. Uh huh. Well, now, let's just head out there. I've never done this mission before, and sometimes these take more than one try. Since I won't be able to lean on my prior experience in uh, in these missions. For example, in the last mission that we did, I was not able to successfully get all of the objectives done. I, I wasn't able to get the, the transport ships. 
And by thinking about it and returning to it, that's actually how I was able to complete that successfully. So, oh, here we go. Letters from home. Thanks to modern day miracle hyperpulse generators, it's mail day aboard the Argo. Crew members filter out of the communications room to receive messages from home. Later that evening, there's a knock at the door of your personal quarters. Upon entering the door, quack slips inside and hands you a data pad. Commander, I had already read half of this message before I realized it wasn't mine. It's addressed to Mac 10 from a long distance lover back home. It's a breakup letter. Boom, boom, boom. A torn expression cre uh, creases Quack's face. I just don't know what to do. He would be devastated. Do I pass the letter on to him or keep it to myself? Um, I'm not here to cause drama, so... Um... Praise him for con considering Mac 10s morale. Good. There we go. McQuack considers for a moment, then reluctantly nods and leaves your quarters. Later that week, you run to Mac 10 and he looks as far too relaxed to be struggling with a broken heart. At the table nearby, Quack catches your eye. By the circles under his eyes, it looks like he followed your advice to withhold Mac 10's letter. It's cutting into his sleep. What a baby. What a baby! It's not even that big of a deal, and it's not going to matter because he'll be he'll it'll be over in 14 days, and it'll take more than 14 days to get to our destination. So how convenient is that? Ready to go over financials whenever you are. Oh yes, taxes. There we go. So, as I said, defensive missions have always been. I've had kind of a love-hate relationship with them. I like defensive missions, but the Battletech defensive missions are pretty rough since the, uh... The computer wastes very little time in destroying its objectives. And a lot of times, they, they destroy objectives with such single-minded intensity that there's just nothing you can do about it. But, uh, I guess we'll see. We do have some pretty powerful battle mechs. Maybe we could just vaporize them with firepower. Or maybe we'll get smashed and I'll have to try it a second time. Now, we just travel there. Our thrusters are maxed out, so it hey, takes Bob, us less time to actually get. Okay, this is going to complete the mech bay area. All right, I'll get the team that means away. any mechs that get repaired or customized will be built at a very fast pace. Okay, let's... Not yet, let's check the store. Um... Piece of a stalker, I'll take that. I don't mind by building a second stalker. Available. Any interesting weapons? So here's some of the DLC weapons, the LBX series of auto cannons. This is a nice looking AC20. I'll take that. New weapon systems. Ooh, an Ultra AC20. I'd love to use that. I would absolutely love to use an Ultra AC20, but not going to use that in. Until the... until we do the career mode. Anyways, let's launch this contract. So, let's pull all of our mechs out and... See, let's view the details first. So, in the wake of Commodore Ostagard's initial attack, Tarian battle mechs have continued to wreak havoc on the general population. We have dropships en route to evacuate as many refugees as they can carry, but the Tarians will target them if they get the chance. I need to deny... I need you to deny them that opportunity. So that means, uh, I guess they're taking a super scorched earth policy. If Ostergaard were pulling this anywhere but the Reach, the whole inner sphere would be screaming about war crimes. We can't let the Tarians get away with what they're doing, Commander. We have to punish them for it. Three Skull mission, so obviously we should have more than enough firepower. So it's a desert battle. I believe we're going to take both the Zeus and the Victor, because they are pretty quick for assault mechs. And I think we're going to take the Stalker. So what we're going to do with the Victor and the Zeus is we're going to take both of our piloting specialists, because they can push the throttle 
the hardest on these battle mechs. They can go the far. So if we need to like really sprint from one side of the battle to the next, these two, Drake and Lobo, are going to be the most likely to do it. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and... You know what? I'm going to let uh, Big Mac's kid... We're going to let Caleb have a shot at the at one of the story missions. So we're going to have uh, Flowey come in here. And I'm going to go in as well, obviously. And we're going to see how this goes. We technically do have range. Well, the Zeus, the Stalker, and my Highlander are capable of range combat. And we have speed. The Victor and the Zeus are pretty fast. And we're tankish. 1,400, you know, 1,000, 1,100. The Zeus is a little fragile for its weight, but... I think we have our bases covered, unless we need even more speed. I guess we won't know, though, until we actually drop in. So we have to protect the Corrosis dropships. At least two of the dropships must survive, so there's more than two. And we need to protect the docking pad's fuel res reservoir. Hopefully... They are well armored. That would be nice. Command interface initiated. The spacecraft in front of you is packed wall to wall with civilians, most of them refugees from the capital. The Tarians must be targeting them as enemy combatants. I need to I need your help to keep those people safe until we can evac them safely. We have three of the late Lord Corrosus's dropships en route to assist with the evacuation. The captain of each vessel will call in on approach. Shepard 1 will be heading to Dock Pad Alpha. Shepard 2 to Dock Pad Charlie. Shepard 3 is heading for Pad Bravo. Uh, you'll need to keep the enemy's eyes on you and away from the docking pads. Above all, you'll need to keep them from firing on the docking pad fuel reserves while the dropships are being loaded. Any hostiles that you fail to engage will almost certainly target the fuel tanks. If they manage to take one out, the resulting explosion will wipe out everything. Dropships, refugees, you name it. You can see the fuel tank's estimated blast radius in red on your screen. Good luck, Commander. The Torians aren't going to make this easy. Protect our ships. Help them get our people home safe. Okay, so here's their vanguard. Light mechs coming in to zip past our defenses. That looks like there he's snaking in a thunderbolt in the background as well. Yes, Commander. Uh-huh, very interesting. What kind of... These are really crummy light turrets. Too bad. Uh, we do have a decent number of turrets, though. We have some vehicles and a decent number of turrets. I'm going to reserve down. We're probably going to need to smackinate this Jenner with a melee attack. Of course, our vehicles are wasting their attacks. Here comes the Thunderbolt. Interesting. It chose to not destroy a turret. Hey, that's fine with me. Oh, well, here comes a Battle Master. Did he just, like, ghost through one of his own guys? So these fuel reservoir reservoirs have 350 structure. Aye, aye. So the first thing we're going to do is smackinate this guy. I'm going to try to smackinate over here. Maybe we'll get his leg, and if his leg goes, he'll lose all of his evasion. Time to get physical. Oh, come on, a miss. Okay, so it looks like the rule is going to be as long as I attack them, they, they must shoot back at me. You know why that miss is especially annoying? Is because these are piloting specialists. They should have like a 95% chance to uh, to hit with the melee attack. Well, the plan was successful. We got his leg, which neutralizes his uh, evasion. Hey there. And that means Flowey is going to probably back up a little bit. On my way. Why do we have such bad aim? Target size and enemy effects. Okay, good. That was just barely enough to finish him off. 
Okay, I guess I will... I can't really go too much... Maybe I can jump and get a shot. All of these look like indirect shots. Yep. So I'm just gonna sprint closer. Okay. I guess our turrets get to go now. Shepard 1 is incoming. Full burn approach. Designa destination Pad Alpha. We've got enemy flankers. Engage them before they take out our dropships. Interesting. Concentrate all fire on those dropships. Take them out or you'll have Ostergaard to answer to. They're going on a full sprint, which means they have to use one turn to close in. Someone wants to get dead. There's a lot of enemies, Ready that's for sure. Orders. Gonna reserve down. So the reason we need to get rid of these annoying light mechs is because they're just going to cause all of our allies to just start wasting their attacks on them and the turrets are going to like fruitlessly shoot at something they have no chance of hitting. Okay, Wait so let's see. We need to send the victor over. The victor has the... We don't want to jump into an area. So these areas here, he'll get smashed by the dropship. Okay, we actually could run farther. So we'll send the victor over. Uh, let's see. Well, how do we want to deal with this? Good to go. Probably gonna scan somebody. Yep. Yeah, I can't make a melee attack, so we're gonna have to deal with. Well, we need to reduce their. Yeah, we don't. We need to re reduce the evasion on these guys. So I'm gonna scan this guy. Fly. Now his. Uh, this is a much better shot. So let's go ahead and start taking our shots. Unfortunately, this is a thunderbolt, so he's just going to start zombieing the crap out of us. Which is really annoying. I'm gonna back up, tank up, and let's see if we can do some damage to this zombie mech. Got through his armor. But not enough to actually take him out of commission, but his evasion's out, which means the turrets could actually do some damage to him. Oh, a knockdown. Very nice. Good. Turrets are cutting into the vulnerable parts that we created on them. Now the turrets are actually useful. Shepard 2 is on approach to Pad Charlie. Shepard 1 has arrived. Wow. Advance. For honor, for liberty, and for the Torian conquered it. What's this Jenner gonna do? I take no pleasure in this, Lady Arano, but we're under orders. You can end this by surrendering to Commodore Ostergaard. Until you do, your people will suffer for you. <laughs> Okay, so they are beginning to attack. Wow, those fuel reserve. 350 structure is not a lot. So I think what we need to do is perhaps not focus fire all of our efforts onto one at a time, but rather just to keep shooting them to get them off of the uh, the targets. Although I do kind of want to finish this guy off, which is definitely possible since he's on the ground. Okay, good, we got rid of him. Let's try how that works. I think what we need to do is just start getting their attention. 
God, they're so fast that their evasion is just insane. Can I get a direct shot on this Jenner? Yes, I can. Engaging jump jets. I'll tank up, and maybe I can kill this guy in one volley. All Got his leg. Although it didn't destroy him, getting his leg is pretty good, too. The turrets might finish him off. Or the vehicles. The Battlemaster has made it. What do you need? Right there. Waiting for orders. I want to hop to get to the battle a little sooner. Copy that. Let's go for the commando because its weapons are a bit stronger. And I'm probably going to drop one laser in order to save on heat. Locked on. Okay, good. We got his leg. Receiving you. Who do I shoot at is the question. We could attempt to finish off the Jenner, which is very likely. But then again, the turrets might finish it off. And when it gets back up, it's going to have an accuracy penalty anyway. So maybe instead, I should begin working on the Battlemaster, because it is the least evasive target at the moment. also out of cover, so it's not the hardest target to kill, either. Though, so, I mean, maybe it could, maybe didn't have an angle on the Jenner. Okay, Shepard 2 is here. Okay, I guess one more turn. Shepard 1 has to survive. Adding a little heat to me, but I've got those double heat sinks, so I should be able to tank through it. That's going to be a problem. That Jenner does a lot of damage. Okay. So many light mechs, they get to go one after the other. So hopefully the commando shoots at the victor. I don't know what he shot at. I guess he shot at the striker. Enforcer took one of our vehicles out. Um, I think what I need to do is I think I actually need to shoot at these guys over here. Affirmative. I'm going to attack the Panther, and I'm going to target Center Torso. It's uh, it, it, the mech is so fragile compared to other enemies since it's a light mech that Excellent. it is possible that we might be able to just kill it outright. Not quite, but I know we did a lot of damage to it. Oh, we got a knockdown. That's good. We just need to get some of these guys off of our... Off of the, what do you call it, objectives. Okay, I'm just going to give this Enforcer the what for. See if we can get their attention. K 
okay. That's not too bad. And the Battlemaster is uh, mainly an energy-based mech, and it's gonna have trouble in this kind of... in this kind of area that it's in. Who do we target? I think we're gonna continue going for the Enforcer. But what we could do is try to get more of an angle on this side of it. Let's drop one of the large lasers and continue attacking. There we go, we got his leg. Targets taking a critical hit. So any turrets that shoot at it will get an accuracy bonus, and then when it gets up, it's going to take an accuracy penalty. Oh, nice. We got that one down. Orders. Okay. Over here, we might... What can we do over here? Location confirmed. Let's see if we can. Oh, come on. It doesn't look like he's too. A... Oh, he's inside the mineral field. I didn't notice that. And, oh, it's just the worst possible shot ever. We're going to shoot anyways, though, just because uh, 14 ammo. This battle is not going to last 14 turns. We'll see. It's unlikely that we hit, but we have to shoot anyway. We just have to keep shooting, basically. Put one of the back. Maybe we'll get his attention, and he'll shoot at us. Okay, I'm guessing another group of enemies are gonna... Okay, so Shepard 1 made it off. Shepard 2 needs one more turn. So it probably doesn't matter if this gets destroyed now. Targeting our Light Shredder turret. I'm hoping that mech is going to start overheating. Yes, it is. Desert is not helping it out. Miss! Oh my god. He, he had the get-up penalty and he's in minerals. Like, that was such an incredibly fortunate shot that he made. Um, who do we shoot at? Maybe we knock out this mech? I think we do, I think. Well, we also have the option to go for the Jenner. Yeah, we're going to go for the Jenner. Uh, we're going to use, uh, right now we're using our morale very aggressively for, you know, for offense instead of defense, but that's what we're going to do. I think we got through its center torso armor, which is good. Maybe a turtle shoot it and finish it off. What is the enforcer going to do? Man, taking out our turrets. I mean, I guess that's his best shot since he had the aim penalty and buildings, I believe, have a, uh, a defensive penalty for being hit since they, you know, they're just a vehicle. So the enemies on our right don't matter quite as much anymore. I could launch a volley of missiles at the Jenner and try to finish it off. I think I am going to do that, even though it's not a great shot. It's more about just getting them off of the fuel over here. Oh, nice. Nice, that, that worked out. That's a kill. Come on, turrets. We lost a drop ship. Oh, the Ten Battle Master the chose to uh, change targets. Dead. So I guess we have to attack it every single turn. The Battlemaster chose to completely overheat there. I believe we will just blast this guy. Or now I'm going to split fire. Like this. Okay, 
we got him. Enemy mech destroyed. So his rear armor is damaged. I wonder if we can take advantage of that. You know what? We're at 40 minutes. I am going to stop this episode here and we will come right back. That's unfortunate. Like I said, I don't know the rules of this mission. Otherwise, I would have thrown something at the Battle Master just to keep its attention. But now I know the rules is that you, you apparently have to attack them every single turn. But obviously, you could tell if they just completely ignored you and all the turrets had just went straight for the objective, they would win this very easily. It's only through the manipulation of attacking them to get you, them to attack you, you'd have any chance of doing this. At any rate, that's going to be the end of this half, hopefully, unless we fail, then we'll have to try again. At any rate, that is that. Like this video, if it was entertaining, subscribe for future Battletech content. Of course, remember that you don't have to be good to get good.